Thank you for joining today on our Side by Side. And we are going to be thinking about Proverbs 9. I see we just got an invitation today to a wedding. And weddings are really good experiences when you know the people involved and something of the storyline. You feel you're part of a celebration. And then, of course, there's usually a nice reception. And at a reception, there's usually some very nice food in a nice location with nice people around you. It can be just the absolute best of occasions and times. I wonder what your most memorable and most enjoyable meal was. Was it a wedding? Maybe one of your children or a friend? Well, maybe it was something entirely different altogether. But I was thinking about this passage because wisdom and folly, these two different virtues that we are presented with here, not only in Proverbs, but throughout the whole of the Bible, it is presented to us as a wise person, a woman who has a beautiful home, who invites you to a beautiful meal. Whereas folly has also got a home. We don't know much about that home, but all we know is that they're offering you a menu, very different menu, that will have a very different end. And so the writer of Proverbs is using this method of using metaphors to try to give us pictures, and the pictures are clear. So what do we have? Well, we have a location, we have an occasion, we have people, and we have menus. And I suppose you could say we also have an outcome, very important. The two houses are built, or they exist, perhaps in similar locations. It seems a little bit like that. We know that there, one of them has a house, Wisdom. She has hewn her seven pillars, and it seems to be a big house. The seven pillars would indicate something of the size, the scale, and the grandeur of this home. So she's invested a lot in her home, in the location where she wants to invite people to come. And then we have something about the menu. Well, it says in this passage that wisdom has slaughtered her beasts and mixed her wine and set her table. So there's the idea there of lots of preparation. It's time has been taken, thought has been gone into this, the idea of getting the right things at the right time. Slaughtering the animals, animals plural, mixing the wine means mixing it with water in preparation for it to be drunk. And then there's table settings as well. The tables are prepared or set. So there's nothing casual or careless about this. And then there's the invitation. She sends out her young woman to call from the highest places in the town so that everybody is going to hear and accessibility to this. So wisdom is going about this process of drawing you into her influence, the, the, the place where she can feed you, the place where she can nurture you, the place where she can help you. Now, what is the result of that? Well, the result here is Uh, Walk in the way of insight. Come and eat of my bread, drink of my wine, leave your simple ways and live. Walk in the way of insight. So the outcome at the end of all of that is is that you live, you you experience life, you, you really come alive. Now, by contrast, folly, Mrs. Folly or Miss Folly, whatever, the woman folly in verse 13, we're told, is very different. She's loud, she's seductive, She knows nothing. Now, those are pretty powerful images. In contrast to the thoughtfulness and the planning and the careful uh, way that wisdom is involved in, in what she's doing, folly is loud, seductive, and knows nothing. And so what it what it lacks in knowledge, it makes up for in other ways, by a seductive or a deceptive way, or by just making a lot of noise. And so if We're thinking of this and nearly, you know, if you close your eyes, you can nearly see the two of them. The one is, it seems, ordered, attractive and constructive. The other is just trying to make its way into your life through dint of noise and seductiveness. Where do we find folly? Well, she's at her front door. That's what it says. She's at her front door, but she's also in high places. High places, or sometimes it's translated, she's on her chair Chairs were very, very rare, and only the very influential, important people had a chair at this time. What it, I think it is saying is, is that 
she has a claim or she's making the claim to authority by being in the high place, taking that place of importance and by speaking so boastfully and so 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 firmly, she's claiming an authority for what she's trying to offer. But there's no plan, there's no order. And then what's on the menu of her home? Well, it says stolen water. Yes, stolen water is going to taste better. And bread eaten in secret is pleasant. There's something there, isn't there, about in contrast to the rich food, the, the animals that are slaughtered and the wine that is carefully mixed. Here we have stolen water and bread eaten in secret. It's The stolen water seems sweet. The idea that to do something sinfully is more enjoyable than to do it the right way. I think we all know something of that. The excitement we get out of doing things that may be a little bit wrong when we're children, you know, the drama. But even those who are involved in certain sinful practices, there's a certain excitement or a, or a perverse pleasure nearly. And once you take that away, it's no longer as interesting. I think that's what happens sometimes in, in affairs. The affair which is secret and stealing something, it, it's exciting. And then when the people who, are, who were involved in the affair finally get married and settle down or whatever, it becomes pretty dull and mundane and may not even last very long. Quite often it doesn't last at all. Her home, Folly's home, is described not as a place of life, but it says, but they do not know that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depth of Sheol. Her home is more like a funeral home than a home of celebration characterised by life. That's what we see. You see, at the end of all of this, how do we feel and how do we look? The place that we go to for our food, as it were, the place, the home that we go to to feast in, will determine the way we look, how healthy we will become. And I think it's so true here, the picture of the Lord Jesus. As we're thinking about Proverbs with Jesus, when it talks about wisdom in the very first word, chapter 9, it's plural, wisdoms. And some wiser scholars than I are able to point out that when we get the plural in the Hebrew, it's talking about the ultimate. This is not just a bit of wisdom. This is talking about the wisdom of wisdoms. And who is the wisdom of wisdoms? Well, God, of course, is all wise. The scriptures teach us that. But his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the wisdom of God. And through him, his message and his word, he gives us wisdom. And Jesus often uses this picture, this metaphor of the banquet and the celebration to speak about his kingdom, sending out to the, the various people, to invite people, come, go into the highways and the byways, bring them in. You know, it's it's a picture here of the, of the wonder of Jesus coming and saying, I have for you everything that you need. Oh, I know you can listen to the loud, the, 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 the voices of the foolish, and you will see many people flock after that. Misled. On the surface, it looks great. But afterwards, it's so, so unhelpful and destructive. I couldn't help thinking that the very way in which we remember our loving Lord Jesus Christ is through a meal when we sit down together periodically, which unfortunately of late we've not been able to, very sadly. But there we share in bread and wine, reminding ourselves of he who is the wisdom and of the wisdom of the gospel that has brought this real life to us and made us wise to salvation. I think this is really just a wonderful little picture and it's something I hope that encourages you to see the wisdom that the Lord Jesus Christ is to you and following him is the way of, of the wise person as something so full of life don't ever let people tell you that to be a Christian and follow Christ is the dull road. It's a hard road, sure, sometimes. It's a road that you may feel alone and often stand on your own, but it's the great road. It's the road of life. And, and let's celebrate that today, that you're on that road of life, no matter what the world around us is like. If we're on that road of life with Jesus, that's the wise road, and we will never, ever regret it. So thank you for joining me today. Tomorrow we're going to take a little diversion into the Lord's Prayer for a few days and come back 
to some themes and proverbs later. <laughs>